I read a story somewhere about a woman who had a bilateral mastectomy. She couldn't remember what her body used to look like. So I saw no downside to having a photographer take pictures. There's a bit of a disconnect, which is odd because I'm looking at pictures of myself, but it's also this other person who didn't know what breast cancer was gonna be like. What about after treatment ends? Is it over? I think it's actually just starting for me because during treatment, I just showed up where I was supposed to go. There was always a plan. There was always an appointment within a couple of days, always. Now that it's nearing an end, I don't know what to do. I don't know who I am. I don't know who this person post-cancer is. I have a new body. My mind thinks totally differently than it did before. I do not look like myself, or at least the, the self I have always identified with. Do you still feel feminine? I struggle with that, especially right now, because I'm bald and I have what look like breasts, but they're not, they're placeholders. I know I'm a woman. I feel like a woman in my heart, but aesthetically, I don't feel very feminine. And that's really hard. Hi. Hi. I'm good. I know. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. You ready to see what's under this? Uh... Yeah, I am. I'm very excited, actually. Oh, wow, it's a lot more than I expected. Really? Yeah. It looks so good. Thanks. Do you like it? Uh, no, like it better than not you? really. Yeah, <laughs> I think I'll like it better after you work on it. Okay. Mm -hmm. We're bleaching it too, right? Yeah. Okay. I want to be blonde. Ooh. I asked my oncologist when I was allowed to dye my hair. Uh huh. She said, you have to wait six months after the end of treatment. Okay. And today, is exactly six months after the end of treatment. That's awesome. So, six months ago today, I was a big, sick baldy. Not anymore. No. So cool. Grace was very reserved. I love it. So I never expected Bleach blonde hair, spiked up. I think it looks so cool, very chic. He thought I was like his new girlfriend. Yeah. Is your lunch packed? Um, yeah. yes. Can you check? Mom, Mom. What? Watch this. Yeah. Whoa. Look, you don't hold a knife like that. Where's he going? Mom, did you put The biggest issue for us was that they knew their grandma had just died of cancer. And they knew their grandpa had died from cancer. So the only thing they knew about the word cancer was that you die from it. This one goes here. I think the way we presented it to them really helped in the way they handled it. This one goes up high. How about these two? It's just, this is something that I have and we're gonna deal with it. In the end, I'm gonna get better and that's it. And that's when they basically were like, cool, what's for lunch? Just fall down. You're getting a little frustrated. <laughs> <laughs> oh, after all, that's climactic. Cheers. 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 To one year. Cheers. Oh, and yeah. mommy, because she had breast cancer. Cheers. 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 <laughs> Thank you. But you said had. Yes. So it's over. There are days where I feel unhinged.
it's really, really scary because what's happening in my mind is so chaotic. I feel anxious about recurrence all the time and I have to live every day of the rest of my life as someone who had cancer and someone who could have it again. Grace has talked a lot about the feeling or the lack of feeling. Has that affected things intimately for you guys? Um, I still think we're working out intimately that, you know, the breast part of it. Um, you know, it, it was a big component prior to uh, the surgery. And what do I do? Do I go there? Do I not go there? Like, <laughs> so I, I still think we're, we're feeling that process out for, lack of a better word. <laughs> yeah. With no physical feeling in this area. Yes, they look pretty good, all things considered. But, you know, I, there's no biofeedback from me on that. And it just sort of makes me sad that they don't work anymore. And then it's like the shame spiral of like, oh, yeah, I had cancer. And that's, that's not good for anybody's libido. So at least for now, that area is... Um, off limits. How's it going? My name is David Allen. I'm a tattooer. I tattoo. About seven years ago, I started tattooing women after breast cancer. I'll conceal the scars. I'll cover up the scars with tattoos. Are you nervous? I guess we're not tattooing today, so that's... I'm a little nervous. Yeah, because, I mean, everything about this is new to me. Yeah. I don't think I've ever even been in a tattoo. Oh, that's right. Spot. That's normal. Most women have it. Yeah. yeah. But I'll just go over the logistics first. Okay. I want to get a tracing of the area, mm -hmm. and then you and I will kind of pick flowers together. And then I want to figure out what area that you... I don't know how to say this, but that you don't like the most. Okay. Because I don't see it like you see it. Okay. So they kind of even wrap. I'm not sure where all yeah, these yeah, yeah. are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, here. This gives me a two dimensional view. It's pretty basic, but it works. It's kind of blowing my mind. Let me give you, for instance. Oh. Yeah. Okay, so I have a few. That's one. Mm, I like that. Yeah. Um, this one's weird. Oh, wow. I don't know that the grace before breast cancer would even consider this as a viable option. Yeah, this one's definitely still in the running. But this new grace feels empowered by the idea. Will you come down here for a second? Family meeting. Okay, so you no, guys you remember yeah. that I had a mastectomy, right? No. What's that? What's a mastectomy? That's the surgery I had on my breasts. Do you remember that? Yeah. And do you remember the big scars that I got? No. You know the scars? Oh, wait, yeah. I don't really like those scars very much because they remind me of when I was sick. Yeah. So I spent some time thinking about what I could do to maybe make them a little bit different. And I came up with the idea of having a tattoo done. Ooh. What do you guys think about me maybe getting one to cover up a bunch of my scars? I don't care. Oh. <laughs> you get one. I think you look fine. She looks beautiful any way she really is. It's very sweet. Did somebody pay you to say that? No. <laughs> I've already picked the person who's going to do it, and he's really cool. Ooh, that looks nice. What do you think about something like that? Why do you want a tattoo anyways? It's a great question. Um, 
I I think mostly just because you want to play around with how um, you had cancer and pretend and just have some fun with it. A little bit, and I also want um, to change the way the scars look. Look, because you don't want people to embarrass you. I'm not worried about what other people think at all. I'm worried about how I see myself. Because now... Oh, because I... they remind you about what happened. And it makes you scared? Yes, it makes me scared, it makes me sad. So, the idea of looking in the mirror is sort of sad to me right now because I see the scars and it reminds me of all the sad things, but if I have a beautiful tattoo there, I got to make the choice to put the flowers there and, and choose what they look like. And it's not for gonna be taken off? Nope. <laughs> Is it touching my body? Yeah, I'm tattooing you. Can't feel a thing. Okay. There was a point where I didn't want to tattoo anymore. I don't like inflicting harm on anybody. So it kind of goes against just my nature. I, I feel like this area has been gone since a year ago. So this is like a resurrection. What you're doing right now has potential to reshape the way I see my whole body. And I'm just grateful that you're able to. Oh yeah, of course. For some reason, I'm in a position where I can do this. I might, I don't know how to stop at this point. It's an intimate profession. And if you let it, and if you let your guard down, it can change you as well. And I think that's an honor. Sorry to do that to you. It's okay. It looks good though. It better, right? Yeah. It's not just the pain, it's sort of like the enormity of the situation. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You're, you're at the end here. the thorns. Good. You needed those. I did need those. <laughs> the variance in the shading, that'll show up more as it, as it heals. You'll view the whole thing through the top layer of your skin. to wake up every day and live it like someone who's just only moving forward. And sometimes that's hard because the past is right here, knocking me on the shoulder and saying like, hey, we were rough, remember <laughs> us? <laughs> um, but what are your options? The only way to go is to put one foot in front of the other. The road might look a little different. Yeah.
No time to rest to run for good. Get up, get up, get up. Before the road pulls you under. Get up, get up, get up. No time to rest to run for good. Get up, get up, get up.